Yo, what's up? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this delay pitched riser box. And obviously my version's up on the blog as usual. You can go download it to compare with your final product or if you want to just skip this tutorial altogether. But uh, this is what we're going to be making and it's super easy just to drop any sample in here, any element of your track to add it to the riser or you could do it the opposite way. You could do a down or down shifter if you wanted to. So this is what we're going to be making with a, just a snare. And I just had it uh, go down there on the end. You don't have to do that if you don't want. You could have it just kind of ring out over the end. Or you could just have it stop. Really, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for this version, I have this little set lined up here. And what I've done is just taken the delay pitch riser box and just dropped an element of the track inside of here and let that build up for the breakdown and the build up. And I think it works really well. So let's go ahead and listen to that. So obviously you're going to need some other things in there, but I just think it's super easy to just drop a sample inside of this box or rack and just have it add to the other transitional effects, build ups and stuff like that. Just to keep, uh, I think it's really good to keep the effects for your build down, breaks ups and explosions and stuff, make them with sounds or other elements from your track. That way it just gives adds to the cohesion of everything. Because if you're just going to take a vengeance sample build up and throw it in the middle of your track, it's not going to really sound right. Or it might, but usually it won't. It'll sound like it's not supposed to be there. But if you make a build up with all elements of your track, then it's going to sound, uh, you know, really special. So anyway, let's go ahead and make this bad boy. If we look here, the only thing that's happening is I've got one knob and I've just automated this one curve right here and that's the main macro i've got a bunch of things routed to there so it starts really slow and then builds up that's really cool i've got the volume for the sample just in case uh, you put something really quiet in there i've also got the gain on the limiter over here and the uh, decay time on the reverb but uh we're all of this by the way is done with the simple delay and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna come into Instruments, Instrument Rack, drop that on there. And I've just got one MIDI note in here. It's hitting on a C3. The length doesn't really matter because the sample we're gonna be delaying is a pretty short sample from an element of the track, so it's not really important, the length of the MIDI note. But I'm gonna use Simpler, and the reason why is if the light version of Ableton comes in Simpler, so I want the most people to be able to use this. And also, this effect can be done with any VST. If I wanted to make a sound, this type of effect with Operator, I could do that as well. But I just like to use the sampler because that makes it super versatile. I could just take the snare or the kick or one of the synth shots and just drop it in here and it's ready to go. And all I have to do is macro, uh, map that one macro and, uh, and automate that one macro over here. So I think that's the best way to go. Let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is put a simple delay on the end of it here. Boom, uh, we're gonna link the two channels. I'm gonna turn the feedback up to 95%, which is as high as it goes, dry wet up to 100%. Um, I link them, I don't know if I already said that. Right click here and hit repitch. And let's just go ahead and get that sample in there just so we can see what it sounds like. So I've just got this the sample right here, it's the end of this kind of loop here. I'll leave a link to this loop pack too, it's pretty dope if you guys wanna use it. But I've just got this, this the sample hit, the last one on the end of the sample, already kind of sectioned off. And I'm just gonna take that and drop it into the device. So take that, drop it in there. And it's gonna automatically have the loop part, the loop braces right where I need them. Or at least the start and the finish, not the loop, but whatever. So now if I come in 
to this and play it. Pretty cool, right? All right, so that's pretty self-explanatory. But if I turn the sync off and then I adjust the time here, it will adjust the rate of the delay time. And when it's trying to compensate, it will pitch up when it's starting trying to go faster and it will pitch down when it's trying to go slower. So if I go ahead and play that now, and I'm gonna play with this delay time. So that's the one we're gonna use. We're gonna use uh, a, lo a longer delay time to a shorter delay time for this riser, but if you wanted to go the reverse of that and make a downshifter, you could do it from a small time to a short time. Something like that. Um, so that's what I want. That's looking sounding great. And what I'm gonna do is map that to macro one. And I want it to start here at the bottom and then curve up. So if I do that now, I can just go ahead and and I'm just map I'm just automating this one macro here. And this is what it sounds like right now. You can hear that it's starting really fast and then it's actually feedback is cutting out super fast as well. So I actually want it to start slow, but with everything else I want it to start here and then go to the right. So all we have to do is come into the map mode, right click here and invert range. Pretty sweet. And now it's working the way we want it, but the problem now is that the volume decreases as the feedback decreases. So what we want to do now, and we can't go up to 100% here, so the way we compensate for that is by using a utility. And I'm going to drop the utility on it. Now I'm going to map that to macro one as well. And then I come into map mode, and instead of going negative 35 to 35 dB, I'm going to go 0 to 35. And now that that's mapped here, it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go up to 35. And that should work just the way we need it to. And it's actually giving it a, a nice kind of boost at the end, which is what you might want. But if you don't, you could just come into the map and bring down the... Uh, the, the max parameter here on that utility gain. So that's pretty much all we need to do. Now, there are some other things that we can do to make it sound a little nicer, and one of those things would be a reverb, and I like to use this bright, long reverb for my uh, tutorials because it's just a super good preset, and it saves a lot of time just to go ahead and use it. So I'm gonna go ahead and map the dry, wet, to the macro one, and then I'm gonna come into the map mode again. And I'm gonna, instead of going up to 100%, which is way too much, I'm gonna go up to 40%. Cool. And now while the everything is happening, it's gonna slowly add on more reverb. which kind of adds to that um, swishy riser type thing. We don't have to go all the way up to 127% either. But. Uh, and the next thing I would want to do is if we want to map maybe the, the width here as it gr grows, we can maybe add a little bit of width. So again, I'd map that to macro one, come into map mode, and then for the utility stereo separation, I'm going to go 100%, which is just as normal, and then bring it up to maybe 130 not too much because if you spread it out too much, it kind of dulls the, the overall impact of the sound. Again, that might be what you're looking for, but for the default settings, I think 100% to 130% is the best way to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is just map some of these other parameters that I think are really useful when you're just going to drop a sample inside of here. You might have to make some quick adjustments, and instead of having to open up everything and get into it, I just kind of map some of the things over to these extra macros. So on macro 4, I'm just going to put the volume for the sampler itself, and I'm going to bring that back up to about negative 4 dB, which is going to make it louder, and you got to be careful with that, but uh, super easy to adjust, obviously. The next thing I'd do is I'd map the decay time, just in case I wanted more or less of that reverb on the riser, and I'd put that on macro 7, and put it back to where it was, it was around 3 seconds, 
324 is fine. And the last thing I always do on these racks usually is I drop a limiter just in case you drop a bad sample in there in a live situation and uh, you don't want any clipping or anything like that. So I like to just use the limiter and then I map the gain in case I want it quieter or louder. And this is the simple way to do it. So I'm going to put it up to 0 dB just so it is on default. We're not going to get any clipping or any compression going on because uh, our volumes are pretty low here to begin with, but just in case, you know. And that's pretty much all I did for that rack. So this is what the finished product sounds like. And if you don't go all the way up here on this macro, if you don't go all the way up, the, the ringing won't die off so quickly. So you can either go all the way up or you can go up a little bit of the way and then come down. Maybe that, maybe that will sound good. Or you could also map the device on for the, the entire rack and that will just shut it off. And if you then use maybe a reverb on your sends and returns, it won't get a nice, it will, it will make it a nice smooth kind of transition instead of something abrupt. But this will work too. Again, you might have to play around with it, but I think it's a pretty solid little rack to have, and it's super easy to manipulate. So here we go. And as you could hear, um, even if you put it all the way back down to the floor, it's still going to kind of ring off. So what you do is just come to the device on and just turn it off when you wanted it to be off, and then it will just cut that sound off for you. So let's go ahead and listen now with this kind of line here, the riser and then the quick fall, and then where it shuts off in, in, with the music to see if it sounds good or not, I guess. go bring it all the way up let's bring it up to all the way up right here and then kind of loop it down and bring it over like this I think this will sound really nice let's listen to that so I think that sounds pretty dope and the cool thing about it now is let's say I wanted to use the snare from the track I would just come into um, wherever that is, maybe this. And I would just duplicate the instrument rack and make sure that I could see it. And then I'd come into here. I'd highlight this, bring it over to kind of chop it into its own thing, click on that, and then drag that in here. And now everything should be the same. It's just that when, after this hit, it's just going to be a riser with the that synth hit and now the snare hit. So let's see what that sounds like. I'll probably have to turn that down. Anyway, that's pretty cool. Super easy to use once you have it all done. And uh, I hope that, that helps you guys in your projects and making your build-ups. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Peace.